Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Today is Saturday, February 20th, and it's 10.05 a.m. I've been doing some studying this morning on something. I got an email from one of you, our sister Crystal. And let me start there, because otherwise you, won't, you might not realize where I'm going. Okay, she said, Hi, Jeannie. This is not important, so save for when you have time, maybe. Well, I think it is important. Uh, just some thoughts of mine to ponder. Isaiah 59, 5. I have wondered about this verse for years. All they have to do is go to Komodo Island for subjects. Okay, so let me pull up Isaiah 59. Let's see. Okay, I've got tools going on here. So I have to go back. All right. What did I do? Okay, it's Isaiah 59.9. This is strong. Okay, I, I, I went down so many rabbit trails here. I got to back up my rabbit trails. All right. Okay, how did I get to Habakkuk? Hold on. Maybe this is Isaiah 59.9. Yes, it is. All right. Isaiah 59.5. Now listen carefully. They hatch. Now I'm in the uh, NASB. But I have found the different translations say these things quite differently. And it's no wonder when you go to the tools and you click on the, the, the number, you get so many choices. So I hope they prayed to decide which one to pick because clearly somebody's wrong. But the NASB says it this way. They hatch adder's eggs and weave the spider's web. He who eats of their eggs dies. And from that which is crushed, a snake breaks forth. All right. Let me go back to, let's see, how do I, oh, I change this to, let's just pick Revised Standard. I'm just picking some different ones. They hatch adders, adder, if you don't know, is a snake. They hatch adder's eggs. They weave the spider's web. He who eats their eggs dies. And from one which is crushed, a viper is hatched. Oh, that's about the very same word. So let's go to King James. They hatch cockatrice's eggs and weave the spider's web. Now, don't you think of cockroach when you hear that word? It is a snake. It is a type of snake. Cockatrice. Let me check my position there. Okay. So a cockatrice is, is a snake. It's an, it's an adder, a viper. They hatch the snake's eggs and weave the spider's web. He that eateth of their eggs dieth. You die. And that which is crushed breaketh out into a viper. Okay. So you might, okay, what are we getting at? All right, let me go back to her email. And then she puts the KJVA, which is, um, well, I can hardly, I can't read that. It's some, But it doesn't say what the K, it's King James Version A, whatever that means, maybe advanced or something. They hatch cockatrice's eggs and weave the spider's web. 
He that eateth of their eggs dieth, and that which is crushed breaketh out into a viper. Now I wonder, you know how they said they used eggs to culture vaccines? Or however they do that? We Before in the past, it was don't take a vaccine if you're allergic to chicken eggs. But at what point do you think they maybe could have started using some other kind of eggs? Because people were allergic to chicken eggs. All right, let's move on. What if it's viper eggs instead? We're just saying, what if? I'm agreeing with her and I'm saying, what if? Ye generation of vipers, Jesus said. Ever thought of that? What generation of vipers? Why would God be upset with vipers when he created them? To be a deadly snake. Why did he? Must have been a reason. But he ever thought of that. That verse, why did Jesus say to the Pharisees and those following them, ye generation of vipers? Just think, lizards lose a tail or foot, etc. They are able to grow it back. Think of the DNA and hybrids or what do you call them? Maybe you're thinking of Nephilim? <clears throat> Chimera? Can't think of the word. Oh, and then she puts in parentheses, Chimeras. Now think of giants. Couldn't Komodos have been much larger when giants lived? Yes, they could have been. Chameleons that can blend in with their surroundings change colors to whatever background they are in. Now, God may have created them that way, and that is their form of defense. All creatures were given something to defend themselves with, whether it was ferocious teeth, or the ability to blend into their environment. Doesn't mean that's always going to save them. But they have something. They may have sharp claws, sharp eyes, like an owl that can fly away if they're in danger. That's that, that man's question about dragons made me research. LOL. By the way, yeah, she's always researching. By the way, thank you for your reply on that. And I, I don't know what she's talking about. I'm sorry, <laughs> Crystal. It was very good. Appreciate the time you took to answer. Might have been something in email, probably nothing online because she doesn't watch videos much. One more scripture that has intrigued me. For years, Habakkuk 1, 14, And makest men as the fishes of the sea, as the creeping things that have no ruler over them. Now, does that sound like God made men as the fishes of the sea as the creeping things with no ruler over them. God is ruler over us. This is talking about a creature, a living thing that is not man. So I looked up Habakkuk 1.14. 
Okay. Um, okay, I'll hold on to that. Let's go back to the scriptures. On to Habakkuk 1.14. All right, now, I read above it to see if that helps. Um, all right, see, in the ESV, because I was looking at all different uh, Bible translations to try to get a better understanding and because it's talking about God clearly in, in verse 12 and 13 are you not from everlasting O Lord my God my Holy One we shall not die O Lord you have ordained them as a judgment you have ordained them as a judgment and you, O rock, have established them for reproof. You who are of purer eyes than to see evil and cannot look at wrong, why do you idly look at traitors and remain silent when the wicked swallows up the man? more righteous than he. Then it goes on to say in verse 14, the one she was speaking of, you make mankind like the fish of the sea, like crawling things that have no ruler. So I got to thinking. Okay, let me read on verse 15. He brings all of them up with a hook, drags them out with his net. He gathers them in his dragnet, and so he rejoices and is glad. Okay, hold on. Oh, wait, I don't want to delete that. Oh, well, I can go back to it. Therefore, he sacrifices to his net and makes offerings to his dragnet for by them he lives in luxury and his food is rich that's not God is he then to keep on emptying his net and mercilessly killing nations forever now who do you think this might be pertaining to? If it's a he, then we're talking about Satan and those who work for him. Let's back up. Verse 14. What if we substitute all of a sudden talking about Okay, they're asking, why do you idly look at traitors? Could be Satan and his minions. And remain silent, and humans that work for them. And remain silent when the wicked swallows up the man more righteous than he. He makes mankind like the fish of the sea. Do you remember reading the word mermaid in the Bible? Let's look it up. I forgot to do that. I meant to already. Is the word mermaid in the Bible? Evidence of the Bible. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, trying to think look, which one would be the shortest. This may surprise you. Evidence of the Bible. Is the Bible worth trusting? The Bible was written such a long time ago. Why should we believe it's true? This is from Barber Village Baptist Church dot org. Trust God. I just want to see if there is a scripture because I was thinking there was. Is the New Testament reliable? No, it would have been in the Old Testament. Let's go back. Ah, mermaids and unicorns in the Bible. We know there's unicorns. I knew that. Can I not just get a verse? Sirens. Oh, they're called sirens. Although St. Jerome, who produced the Latin Vulgate, that's the Catholic version of the Bible, used the word sirens to translate Hebrew tanim in Isaiah 13.22, jackals. And also to translate a word for owls in Jeremiah 50. This was also explained by Ambrose to be a mere symbol or allegory for worldly temptations. That See, that's what the, the priest that was teaching us in the 12th grade was trying to tell us that all these things in the Bible, like Jonah and the whale, the parting of the Red Sea, the, um, the, the, the flood, were all, uh, what was the word he used? They were <sighs> myths. That's not the word he used. They were stories that were taught to teach a lesson. All right, here in Wikipedia, it says siren, quote, or parentheses mythology. Yeah. In Greek mythology, the sirens were dangerous creatures who lured nearby sailors with their enchanting music and singing voices to shipwreck on the rocky coast of their island. Roman poets placed them on some small islands called Serenum Scopuli. In some later rationalized traditions, the literal geography of the Lowry Flowery Island of uh, something, Athromoesa or Arthemus, Arthemusa, sorry, I don't know how to translate them or, or pronounce them, is fixed. Sometimes on Cape Pelorum and at others in the islands known as the Cyrenius near Pestrum or in Capria. See, those words are very similar to words in the Bible. Capria sounds like Capernaum. All such locations were surrounded by cliffs and rocks. Okay, it doesn't say what I want it to say, but there, there were supposedly mermaids I don't know about now, if anybody has seen any now, but we know that the fallen angels 
the male fallen angel slept with daughters of men and they produced giants. We also know the fallen angels brought heavenly technology with them. I have no doubt that they already knew how to create things by taking their eggs and injecting sperm from another creature to form another creature. Maybe they just had fun doing it. Maybe they wanted to see how much they could destroy God's DNA. Way back then, take a fish. They lay eggs, right? They would know how to get the eggs out. People get them out all the time and eat them as, what do they call it? It's supposed to be a delicacy? I can't think of the word. Fish eggs. They're called something it's right on the tip of my tongue. Some are black. They look slimy. Ugh. If you ever watched a movie Big, where Tom Hanks played a kid that got turned into an adult, he went to New York, I think, got a job in a toy, toy making <laughs> place, and he was so good at playing with the toys and saying, this one's no good, it breaks too easy. This one's really good. It gives, it'll give a child a chance to change it up into all different things. This one will sell well. And he ended up caught, making them lots of money. So he goes to this fancy dinner and they said, rent a tux. <laughs> He goes to a tux shop, and he rents an all-white tux that looks ridiculous. <laughs> he goes to the table, and he eats this. Oh, I thought that would help me remember. Oh, gosh, I can't remember. He ate some of these fish eggs, and he's going, and dropping them all over the table. <laughs> oh, my. Anyway, it was ridiculous and fun, and I think that's what I would do. I just think they would taste horrible. Anyway, y'all are probably saying the name of it right now, and I can't hear you. All right. So anyway, what if they took these fish eggs, and through what they knew, they somehow, even though they didn't have all the materials yet, to form a needle... There are larger fish. There are whales. Uh, I mean, who knows what they used. It would have been a bigger fish to make a mermaid the size of a human, probably. And I imagine they came out in all kind of ways. Probably killed and ate the ones that didn't look right. They wanted the half woman, half fish. And they were seen and wrote about. All right. Now keep that in mind. And we'll move on. You make mankind like the fish of the sea. Not God. He. This one, he. All right. So when I went down in the tools, the very first word is not he and it's not you. It's and makest, and makest. All right, so back up to 13. You who are of purer eyes than to see evil and cannot look at wrong, why do you idly look at traitors and remain silent when the wicked swallows up the man more righteous than he and makes man as the fishes. You see, it continues and makes man. Whereas this is translated, this is the ESV, 
you make mankind. God did not do that. Satan and his fallen angels did this and makes man as the fishes of the sea, as the creeping things that have no ruler over them. See how much you can get into? Man, it's awesome. Now, I got to find out where I found it says and injected. All right, we're going back to Isaiah 59. Oh, didn't get there yet. Oh, yeah, back up here. When she talks about Isaiah 59, 5, that she wondered about these. They hatch the cockatrice or viper's eggs and weave the spider's web. He that eateth of their eggs dieth, and that which is crushed breaketh out into a viper. All right, remember that. Let me go back. To Isaiah 59. Okay. They hatch cockatrice's eggs. Okay, now. They hatch. Alright, which word did I use? And weave the spider's web. He that eateth of their eggs dieth. If you get that egg stuff injected into you, it could kill you. Okay. I, I don't remember, and I don't want to waste a lot of your time looking. That could be something you could do. One of these words in 59.5 I clicked on, and it had a long list of what it could have meant. And at the bottom, towards the very bottom, it said, injected into. Okay? So, my point is they need egg liquid. It's the albumin protein. It's the perfect protein to culture their vaccines. Even them, you know, the measles, mumps, rubella, the chicken pox, all the baby shots. I remember being asked, is your child allergic to chicken? It's rare, but it, or eggs. Some are allergic to eggs, but they can eat chicken. A full grown, changed it changes as it absorbs into the yolk and forms into the chicken. It changes. When we eat chicken, it doesn't turn us into a chicken, does it? No. It's just healthy protein. But some people, when they eat the eggs, they break out into hives. They can't eat them. So... It's something to do with the albumin because it's a pure protein. That's why a lot of people, uh, not a lot, I think they're kind of nutty myself. People that are real into weightlifting, they crack several eggs into a glass, stir it up, and drink it. Now, the yolk might have a part in it. But I'm pretty sure it's the albumin they use for making vaccines. And I'm just telling you what I'm finding in the Bible. So, break it out. Oh, that might be it. And he, 
break it out. One, two, three, four. Let me just cleave, divide, rent, break through, rend, breach, asunder, hatch, break, burst, cleft, break forth, pieces, tear, tear, or win. Hmm. But it was way down here at the bottom. No, I don't think that was the one. Okay. I, I, um, I had to re get out of there to go back to the original list, and that's why I got messed up. Okay, so I'm sorry about that. You'll just have to take my word for it that at the bottom it said injects in two. Now, who's to say those fallen angels and their Nephilim didn't get together and do some DNA manipulation to see what they could form. Oh my my, what fun. Let's do that. And who knows where they did it. But I'll bet after the flood, whoever of them survived and how they survived, who would have survived? Those mermaids? Perhaps they could breathe underwater. There might have been all kinds of creatures created to breathe underwater because they knew the flood was coming. The Bible says the Nephilim survived. Let's go there. I'll just go there from here. Genesis 6. corruption of mankind and it came to pass when man began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they took them wives of all which they chose and in the book of Enoch this goes into more detail the book of Enoch should have stayed in the Bible. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. Yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. They, he, he will not strive with man more than a hundred and twenty years. That's what an, um, another version says. Now listen, there were giants in the earth in those days. That, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old, Men of renown. So it is saying right there in verse 4, Genesis chapter 6, that the giants in the earth survived the floods, or at least they were created again after the flood. The giants are real. Their bones have been found. You can see pictures on Steve Quayle's website. At Steve, Q-U-A-Y-L-E, PutItTogether.com. Let's make sure that's still a good site. I'll take a picture and use it as my... I'll use it as my, um, okay, he said, Genesis 6 Giants, click to go there. You have to click now. It's not right on the front page. Important, he's got a, um, a Bigfoot. Our objective, a weird looking thing, Genesis 6 Giants. <laughs> Jasper, we know that when David fought 
Goliath. David and Goliath, yeah. Goliath, he doesn't have the bones. Genesis 6 Giants, Volume 2. Oh, here's a, a modern giant. He's got his arm out, and the man standing beside him comes up here. Isn't that odd? It carried over clear to our generation. Uh, but he took the picture of all the skulls down. Photo of the day. Let's see. Oh, it's a crop circle. He's got a lot of very interesting stuff if you want to check it out. But yes, the website address is still the same. Genesis, I mean, stevequell.com. This is the Philistines fighting the Egyptians. Uh, Egyptians. The Israelites. How much bigger they were. And they're redheaded. We were talking about that on the team last night. About how weren't the giants redheaded? There's a picture of one standing over a man. Maybe that's a drawing. I don't know how they could have took a picture, but it looks like a picture. Some people are really good artists. The leading authority on giants. One hundreds, hundreds of pages and photos about giants. Well, I'm clicking on it, and I'm not getting there, so I don't know how to get there. Anyway, you can check that out if you want to. Some people do not believe there were ever giants. I think they were just extra tall men. But no, there were giants, very big giants. Um, dead scientists, that's uh, um, he's got hundreds and hundreds from 2004 to 2016 and then he's got one 1994 to 2003 and then articles people that discovered not only the cause but also a cure for these illnesses that come out of Things were being forced upon us as children and uh, even as an adult things were given every year to prevent the flu things like that um, they don't want out and they were killed or whether excuse me they were suicided or their car ran off a cliff or they had a heart attack or something like that okay I'm ending it right there because now I'm rambling but I think that's an important site for you to check out if you are interested in that sort of thing all right with that I'll say bye for now y'all I will talk to you again later